church. Good to have you in God's house this morning. Good to be back with you. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who is. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung upon that cross. And he rose up from the grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We were forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise.
story I heard about a pig that was a low-life millionaire pig. Just three years. And one day his son, his heir, came to him and he said, uh, Dad, he said, I'm 17 years old. And he said, I, I, it's the first prom I've ever been to in all my life and I'd like
That's all we have to say from that is oink, 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 oink. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. We appreciate that. We have an announcement real quick. Yeah, we are celebrating that we had a total of 95 Christmas boxes Amen. go out from Grace Fellowship Supper. Supper. Now, that's, uh, is that the most we've had? I think that's the most that we've ever had since I can remember. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah. 95. Lots of donations of things and lots of postage donations as well as finished boxes with postage money in them. So Amen. it was good. Amen. That is wonderful. Stand with me, and let's sing to the Lord, the solid rock. Here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain. But only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand I'm 
Trust you. 
trust you alone. You alone. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship. You alone are worship. morning. Everybody have a good Thanksgiving? I hope so. Well, we're entering into that season that Pastor Deal was talking about, and you know, everyone, I've, I've heard it a few times here last week, they'd say, Happy Thanksgiving and have a Merry Christmas. So they're already started saying Merry Christmas, so I'm going to be the first to tell you this morning, Merry Christmas. But we're on that season. And, uh, you know, as a church, you never know what you get on Sunday morning, especially in the holidays. You don't know if people are traveling or people are sick. And talking to some folks, we had some that were sick last week, but they're here this morning. We had others that are sick this morning, and they're traveling. And so you never know who will be here, especially during the holidays. But you know what? God has designed and had a plan for you to be here this morning. And that's what matters. And so we're in the house of the Lord, and I do agree that we don't have the opportunity, I don't believe in the future, or we'll have the opportunity in the future, to meet as we should. And what I mean by that is this, the Bible teaches us not to forsake the assembling together, as some have done, but to do more so as we see what? The day approaching. What day approaching? The coming of the Lord Jesus. And folks, we're to be here. And so I'm glad you're here this morning. And I'm glad God got you here this morning. I want to make a couple announcements. First of all, uh, December the 11th, the second Sunday night of December, we're having our Christmas banquet. There's a sign-up sheet out here in the South for you. Please put your name on it and we know how many people's coming. So, and put it on there. Bring a side dish or whatever you can bring and that'll be good. We have a good time. We meet on Sunday night, and we fellowship with a meal and with uh, just worship and music, and, and so it's a good family night. So anyway, please come. And I also want to say um, thank you to all the people that do so hard work of getting everything ready, and, and um, it's, it's just a blessing to have people working in the kingdom of God. And also, I want to tell you, there's a holiday schedule, so check that out in your bulletin. There's some Sunday mornings we won't be having Sunday school on Christmas or New Year's, and there's some Wednesday nights missing, a couple of those, one of those, I think, coming up. And Maranatha will be, uh, won't come back up, and we start Sunday night back up on Maranatha until January the 8th. So you'll kind of know that schedule. But anyway, it's good to be in the Lord's house. I'm going to read you a story this morning about a preacher named H.A. Ironside. And he was a dynamic preacher, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. And I want to also talk about having leftovers this morning. Now, y'all all know you, you have leftovers from uh, Thanksgiving. You eat the turkey sandwiches, you eat the turkey and this, the turkey and that, until you get all the turkey eaten, right? And then it's over. 
Well, this morning, I want to have a little bit of leftovers about being thankful, about being thankful to what God has done in our lives. And I, I, I will hope and pray that you're very encouraged of what God has done in your life, and I pray that you'll be involved in that. I also want to ask the ushers to come this morning as we take up this morning's offering. And uh, if there's any little ones that'd like to help me take up some pocket change as well, please come and, and you can do that. And, and if people don't want to give you pocket change, you can just hold the bag in front of them long enough, they'll give you something. But uh, hey, y'all, come on. Come on, y'all can help. Come on. I don't know if they want to. Okay, well, then that may be me. I'll, I'll do that. But let's ask the Lord's blessing here this morning. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing. And Lord, we just pray that, Lord, you, you'll move on our hearts this morning. Father, we need to hear from heaven. Lord, we need to hear from God this morning. And Father, thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We're so thankful. And so, Lord, as we give, let us be cheerful givers. Lord, let us be reminded of God, the gift that you've given us. That, Lord, we can never repay you, but, Lord, we certainly want to worship you with our giving. So, Lord Jesus, thank you. And we ask that you will take this offering now and use it to reach people for the kingdom's sake. In Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 Man. Hope you folks are giving them your pocket change. Just for a reminder, you ask, why do you do this on Sunday morning? Because the children learn how to, I guess they learn how to collect money. But they learn how to also give that money. They put it in this offering up here. And all the offerings, everything that's taken here at Grace Fellowship Church goes to help out people. And believe me, we help a lot of people. And um, I was reminded of someone just here recently that we helped, and they had moved away to the Dallas area and was in need, and we even uh, continue to help them a little. And so, you know, it's, the, it's just the Lord's way of, of using us to be a blessing to other people. And so I just want to thank you for all your giving. And, and then, guys, when you get it, you can pour it in this offering right up here in this container. Let's go pour it right in there. Well, that's okay. That'll work. We'll, we'll work it out later. That's, you know, like last-minute instructions. And uh, Miss Marla will be carrying them out to the children's church this morning. Praise the Lord. There you go. There you go. Okay, well, how many of you guys have ever been asked to bless the food? How many of y'all have ever been asked to bless the food? When you're out eating or you're, you're having Thanksgiving or whatever, you've been asked to bless the food. I remember the first time in church, and I don't do this, I ought to do this, I ought to put you on the spot, but I'm, I don't. But I remember the first time in church becoming a Christian, uh, receiving Christ, and the preacher would call upon people in the congregation for closing prayer. And it would be random. And... I was probably in the Lord, I don't know, six months, eight months by then. 
and the Lord called on, he called on me to have closing prayer on Sunday morning. Now, I don't know much, so I'm just sweating these beads of sweat. You know, I'm just nervous, and I stand up. I don't know how long it lasted, maybe two seconds. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, that's good, amen. And, you know, ever since, I, I realized, well, what a, I got a lot to be thankful for. I've got a lot to be thankful for. And, you know, and when I'm asked to pray, of course, it's, you know, the preacher always prays. But, you know, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to pray. And this past week was no different. Thanksgiving come around, and, and uh, Wayne come up to me at Thanksgiving and asked me to say the blessing, and, and I was uh, so grateful to do so, and so I start off my, ble- my thanking the Lord for what he's given us. He's given us health. He's given us family. He's given us food. He's given us all sorts of blessings. And so I want to kind of go back to that here this morning of what I'm truly thankful for. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, I'm thankful for each and every one of you. And having said that, I'm thankful for even uh, those that are new in our church. I know that Carla's not here this morning, but Joshua is, and Joshua and Carla are signed up and become members of the church, and so we're blessed to have them. So give them a round of applause, and you know, Joshua's sitting over there behind Pastor Deal, but go and uh, shake his hand this morning, and, and I'm so thankful he's a part of the church. Now, what's his responsibility is he don't realize that he just joined the church of a bunch of misfits and uh, people that need prayer, right? Right? Do you need prayer? And But no, he joined the church that uh, these people in here love him and he'll pray for us and we'll pray for him and help his family along and grow in the Lord. But, you know, I heard the Psalms 100 over and over, and I want you to turn there just for a moment as we read this together and talking about being thankful. And David says here, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Singing is a way of a cheerful heart. It reflects that. Know that the Lord, He is good. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves, aren't you thankful? We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His holy name for the Lord is good How much of the time? His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. And when I read that, I began to think about the things that I'm thankful for. Now I'm going to mention just a briefly here this morning things that I believe that you're thankful for as well. Each one of us here, if we have a, a, a husband or a wife, we're thankful for those. Thankful for Deborah. She does so much in my life, and God has chosen the right person for sure for me. And then I'm thankful for my children. Now, I want my children to be better Christians than I. I want my grandchildren to be better Christians than them. But I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for the country that I live in. I live in a country where I'm free to worship. I live in a country where there's still somewhat freedom. And I'm also thankful for my health. I remember many years ago I was in a part of a prayer meeting not too far from here. was having a revival up at Lane Chapel. And we were back in the back with some of the prayer warriors there praying for the revival that night. And an older man come up to me. He was probably, I don't know, maybe 80, maybe older. And he was praying for me, and he asked me how old I was, and I told him, he said, oh, man. He said, you're well preserved. <laughs> and I never will forget that. I did, you know, 
Okay, that's good, but I'm thankful for my health. I, you know, God has blessed me. And so, I'm going to read you this that I run across them. I looked at H.A. Uh, Ironside's life. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about him. He was an evangelist. He was a great man of God. He started teaching Sunday school when he was 12 years old. Sunday school. Well, you know, hey, we don't have no Sunday school teachers. Well, here's one, 12-year-old, teaching Sunday school. Now, get this, he didn't get saved until he was 13. You might, you might find that amazing. You mean you can teach Sunday school and not be saved? There's plenty of Sunday school teachers probably out there that's not saved. Plenty of pastors, matter of fact, out there might, may not be saved. He preached 500 sermons in one year at the age of 16. 500. We'll be lucky to preach 100 in a year. 500 sermons at the age of 16. They called him the boy preacher. He preached 7 thousand sermons in a 13 year stretch between 1916 and 1929 to over 1.25 million people 7,000 sermons that's averaging 600 a year at least he preached Billy funerals uh, Billy Sunday's funeral as well he was part of Dwight L. Moody's uh, uh, school and, and, and his push in evangelism. And so he was at a restaurant once eating. I told you all that to tell you this. Because this guy, he ought to know how to bless his food, right? He has plenty of resources. But H.A. Ironside was in this crowded restaurant eating by himself and a man approached him and asked him, could he join him? And Ironside said, sure, there's a seat. Then as his, was his custom, Ironside bowed his head in prayer. When he opened his eyes, the other man asked him, do you have a headache? Ironside replied, no, I don't. The other man asked, well, is there something wrong with your food? Ironside said, Ironside said, no, I was simply thanking God as I always do before I eat. And the man said this to him, oh, you're one of those. Well, I want you to know I never give thanks. I earn my money by the sweat of my brow and don't have to give thanks to anybody when I eat. I just jump in. I just start. And Ironside's reply to him was, yes, that's just like my dog. That's exactly what he does. He just jumps in. And you find that kind of comical, but at the same time, there's a lot of truth here. God has given us everything. Everything. And when I thought, uh, I thought back to Thursday when I was blessing the food there at the house, there was so much more that needed to be said about God, about how God has truly blessed us. So this is leftovers this morning. First of all, I will be thankful to God for his goodness. God is good according to Psalms 100, isn't he? God is good. Matter of fact, Psalm says, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way. Also, Psalm says, 135, 3, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. I love singing praises to God. You should too. If you're in Christ today, you love that. My heart is merry this morning because 
I have an awesome God that I serve, and he's been so good to me. How many times has God gotten you out of a scrape in life? How many times has God protected you? Folks, there's numerous times in my life. And just to pick a top two or three tied up in a pawn shop, not knowing if I was going to get shot or not, and my 12-year-old beside me. God got me out of that. Going down the road in the semi-truck late at night, raining, and, the, and, and they have a massive wreck up ahead of me, and there's nowhere to go, and you're driving a truck that's loaded. You say, well, you know, uh, like that old story is, you better wake up Bud because he's about to see a wreck. And anyway, God just made a way. And the, the, the asphalt road was tilted, and all the cars began to slide to the left, and the truck just happened to go to the right, and I went to the right too, and, and here we go. We just had inches. Over here on Highway 69, where you go to White House, I was crossing that road when I was 18, 19, in a Datsun pickup. Y'all know what that is, Nissan. Small pickup. And that's back when there wasn't a red light. There wasn't an overpass there. There wasn't a red light there. You crossed that busy highway. I crossed that highway, and all of a sudden, lights out, I stuck that Datsun pickup underneath the semi truck coming northbound and tore the whole truck in two and spun it around in the road and looked down, and there was no firewall. And I was looking, hoping I had feet left. And God protected me. I was not God's child at that time. That was right before I met the Lord. But God was good to me. You can count countless times in your life when God has been good to you. So I've tasted of the Lord. I know he's good. Blessed is the man who trusts him. I trust him with my life. I had given my life to Christ. Now, one of the messages I was going to preach was talking about that very thought there. Follow me, and we'll get to that next week. But I have given my life to God, and I'd follow him. Be thankful for God for he is love. If you want to know what love is, just look at God. Because 1 John says that he loves, that God is love. Now, having said that, if love is not an attribute of God. Love is God. In your conception of love, it does not agree always with justice and judgment and purity and holiness, but God does. God's a God of love. And when we read John 3.16, you see it at the football game. You see it, I, I, was, I was watching the story of, uh, of uh, Tim Tebow, had a documentary on TV about Tim Tebow, and I was looking at his, his uh, little patches underneath his eyes that when he played football, he had scripture written on them, like Romans 1.16 or Romans 3.23 or John 3.16. For tr displaying to the world that God loves us and that willing that none of us should perish. So I'm thankful to God for his son, I'm going to tell you, I'm thankful for his son. He is described as the unspeakable gift, the undescribable gift that God had given to the world in 2 Corinthians. There's not enough words that will adequately express our language that can convey what a gift God has given us in his son. Eternal riches. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. God is good. 
all the time. No matter how much we try, these words seem to, they don't really communicate sometimes what we feel in our heart about God. I didn't realize when I accepted Christ many, many years ago in 1977 that he would become such a centerpiece that my all in all, the God that that takes care of me day in, day out. God watches over me. We have a covering over us, folks, if we got the Lord Jesus Christ. God covers our lives, and I believe he does it also when we're sinners. He protects us until the word is given, until we can be called into the kingdom of God. So second. Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through him, he, we were made rich. You know, I was poor. You know, poor in many ways. Poor monetarily in every other way. But I have Christ today. And I am rich beyond all my means. If that is all that I had today, I am rich beyond all means. The depths of suffering that Jesus endured on the road to Calvary. When Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 8 says, Surely he hath bore our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did, uh, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and chastised for our peace was upon him. And his stripes, we are healed. Now listen to the rest of the verse. All of us, all of us, you know, you got to realize all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us as sheep had gone astray. And we turn Everyone to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Do you know what? I was telling uh, Pastor Deal this morning when he was talking about good deals. You know what? When I met the Lord, I really, really, it was a great deal for me. But what did God get? What did God get? When God is a God of love and he loves his creation, he loves you and I, he loves mankind, that he would give his son as a sacrifice for their sin so he could have a relationship with them. So what did he get at that moment? He got a broken heart. He got a a spirit that, that, that needed him. I don't know if God would say, I got a great deal. But you know, he gave a lot to get that. He gave all that he had to get that. You need to realize that in Christ who you are today. We went through that whole sermon in, in the book of Ephesians about who we are in Christ Jesus. God loves you. And you know what? God's love started way back in my life. While I was saying there's no such thing as God, He was commanding His love toward me. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While I'm saying there is no God, I'm thankful. Oh, I'm so blessed this morning. So thankful that the Lord revealed himself. That the Lord came. That the Lord sought you out. Sought me out. And we stand here blessed today. We ought to worship. We ought to shout hallelujah. We ought to be the happiest people on the planet. 
We ought to be full of Merry Christmas every day. We ought to be. I've encouraged you in the last couple of weeks to go out and invite people to church. Church. The roof will fall in if I go to church. Well, I'd like to see that. I ain't got nothing to wear. Well, I'll give you some. I'll buy you some clothes. Come. I've asked you to invite them. The reason why I done that was because I was invited to church. And if the Lord can take this and turn it into a mess and turn it into something that he sees as valuable, I'm still trying to figure that one out. He can do the same with you. And you can do the same with that person on the street. Be thankful to God for his abiding presence. Now I'm going to tell you, I am so thankful that God never leaves me nor forsakes me. I am so glad that God was in the cab of that truck with me that day. And you may say it any way you want to. God help us. God, I need you right now. You need to show up. If not, this could be bad. But God is present with you every step of the way. As we heard about a journey already this morning, we have all these journeys in life. When we become God's child, this journey just began. But folks, we're headed to the promised land. God's called us to the promised land. And one day we'll be there with him. I pray that the God comes for the church on Sunday morning. But if he comes for us individually, one day we'll be there. But God's placed us on a journey. He's never left me alone. He's always given me victory. He said, Robert, victory is yours for the taking. All you got to do is just do it. Just live, a, live the word. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Do not be dismayed, for I am thy God. He's saying that to Joshua. But Joshua is, a, is God's child, just like we are. So he's saying it to us today. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with my right hand, my righteousness. Don't you love that about God? He's got a hold of you. Does he have a hold of you? Maybe that's the question all day. Does he have a hold of you? I hope he does. And I want to tell you the one that I'm most thankful for this morning, one of the most, you know, on the list is the church. Say, so, well, you know, wait a minute. You're the pastor of the church. You know, it's your responsibility to come up here and preach. Yeah, I know all that. But I am a Christian. I am a believer. I am a servant of God. And you know what? I need the church. I need the church because it's my fellowship. I need the church because it's the closest I'm going to get to the body of Christ until I get there to heaven with Him. I need the church. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Well, where do we get that from? The church. That's what God does through His teaching, through the teaching of the Word. He transforms you. Does he not? C.S. Lewis said it this way. Left to oneself, one could easily slide away from the faith once given into a phantom called my religion. I need the church. I need the church. I need the church because when I go to church, I'm glad 
Let, let us go into the house of the Lord. Not to be sad. It didn't say I'm sad. It says I'm glad. Let me go into the house of the Lord. You know why I'm glad to go into the house of the Lord? Because this day, I'm going to be encouraged. This day, I'm going to get to fellowship with other believers of like mind that know that their Savior loves them. And folks, I get to meet with you. I'm grateful for the church. because Let me, let me say something here. I had the hardest time back in coronavirus. They were saying shut down, couldn't meet no more than 10 people. They had all these restrictions. And you know, you kind of felt like, you know, oh, I need to probably do this for, you know, my fellow brothers and such and because everybody else is doing it. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't make it right. But I need to do this. So I shut, we shut the church down and limited it to 10 people. Most of those were those that led music and, and preached and, and run the electronics so we could have um, video. But I want to tell you, it was a hard time for me. You know why? Because there's nothing that will take place of the in-person worship in God in the body of Christ. Nothing. You can't, you can't get it off of a tube. You have to get it in person. Am I making any sense to you here today? It helps my faith to grow when I know my brother, he's walking through trials, or my sister's going through, th sister in Christ is going through things, and, and they tell me about them, and this is how God had picked me up, and it's encouraging, and I'm learning. And I'm walking in faith with them and sometimes I'm walking good and they're not and I encourage them. Sometimes it's just the opposite. But it supplies my, my spiritual growth and my teaching. You say once again, well, you're the pastor. You're supposed to teach the Word of God. You're supposed to preach the Word of God. Yeah, but when I get in it and I get to learning from the Word of God, then I come into the church and I, and I share verses with you and you share verses with me and I learn from you. You know, folks, nothing can take place in the church. It grants an opportunity for that Christian fellowship. And, and, and by the way, by the way, let's talk about prayer for a moment. Let's just talk about prayer. When you're at home and you're praying, or you're praying over your meal or wherever you're at, but you're by yourself, let's just say, and, and you're praying, boy, what does it mean to be in the church of God Today in his house, what does it mean for two or three are gathered in his name? What does it mean when they begin to pray with you? The power of prayer that sits right here in these chairs every Sunday. I need that. I need brothers and sisters, multiple brothers and sisters praying. I need that corporate prayer. So it, it turns into corporate worship. It turns into, you spur me. Keep the faith, brother. Stay the course. Don't give up. I need the church. I'm so thankful for the church. I wish it was filled. I wish there were so many people here this morning with standing room only. But God chose this day to have you here. And I'm thankful for that. When that time I was preaching and, and they had it on video, there was two, three people sitting out here. And I know they probably thought I was staring at them. Because I was. Because you know what it's like preaching to an empty chair? What about if H.A. Ironside, when you get to heaven, 
Ask him what it'd be like preaching to empty chairs when he preached 700 sermons a year. 7,013 year stretch. 1.25 million people listening. Ask him. He'll tell you real quick. People. I gotta have people. And I gotta have the church. Just so just so happens you are people. Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. Now I'm going to close and I'm going to tell you this. Let's just look at where we come from. If you're in Christ here today, I'm going to read you a poem. This is, this is not three points in a poem, it's five points in a poem. From the door of an orphanage, that's what you were. You were at the door of the orphanage to the house of the king. You think about that for a minute. You were orphans until God reached down and saved you. No longer an outcast, a new song I sing. From rags to riches, from weak to strong, I am not worthy to be here, but praise God, I belong. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. I am part of the family of God. Amen? Amen. So what are you thankful for today? You see, when I was asked to mention that prayer on Thursday, there was so much more that I didn't mention And if I could go back and redo it, I'm sure they wouldn't want me to preach to them for 30 minutes in a prayer. They're ready to eat turkey. But there's so much more to be thankful for. And I'm going to tell you here today, I don't know what I, 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 I don't know what I would do, where I would be, or what I would have become if Christ has not entered my life. I don't even know if I'd be here. God's divine appointment is I believe with all my heart there's a reason for you being here this morning. I believe with all my heart that there's a reason why you got invited to church. I believe with all my heart there's a reason for you to pick up one of those little invite cards and give it to somebody that God has a divine appointment. I believe that in all my heart. Now I'm going to encourage you this morning to say this. If you don't have Christ today, you can't. If the message that God had this morning through being thankful is speaking to your heart. That's God. If you're being asked to come to Christ this morning, let me help you out. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. The devil won't ask you to come to Jesus. The flesh won't ask you to come to Jesus because it can't please God. But if the Spirit is asking you to come to Jesus, that's God. If he's asking you to break out in a song in your heart, giving thanks to God, that is the Spirit of God. I am so thankful. I am truly blessed. I pray that you all in here know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask Lance to come up here, lead us in a song called Give Thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. For He is given, what? Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful today. So let's put on a smile. Let's be joyful. Let's go into... 
our community into Tyler, Texas. And when we run across that stranger on the street and we say, Merry Christmas, because they're all going to say it to you. You're going to get the first jump on, Merry Christmas. And you might want to say, do you know what that means? It may open up a whole new door for you to talk about the Lord Jesus. I encourage you. This is a good time of year to be witnesses for Christ. Let's go before him in this song. And if you need uh, prayer, the altar's open, please come. If you need Jesus, please come. If you need anything, please come. May God touch you. Let's stand to our feet. Let's sing this to the Lord. God is so good. God is so good. That's true. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. God answers prayer. Does he? Does. God answers prayer God answers prayer He's so good to me I'll do His will I'll do His will I'll do I'll do His will, He's so good to me. Merry Christmas. May God bless you guys. You can now go share Jesus with the world. They need to hear, they need to hear it. May God bless you.